Hello everyone, my name is Hightech Man. Welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're gonna be learning how to make our very own Tor slash VPN router. Now what that basically means is that we're gonna take the unfiltered internet that we get from our internet service provider, plug it directly into the Raspberry Pi and emit a Wi-Fi signal from the Raspberry Pi that any of our tablets, our cell phones, or computers can connect to. However, when they connect to our network with the Raspberry Pi, what'll happen is the Raspberry Pi will automatically encrypt everything that we're transmitting using the Tor uh, nodes or the Tor VPN network. Now, if you have a VPN network that you already subscribed to, there are ways to do it like this. The way I'm gonna do it is through the Tor network, which is secure enough for what we're gonna be doing. Because basically the idea is this. You take your cell phone, you connect to our Wi-Fi network made by the Raspberry Pi, and you're automatically on a different network, easily. You're not on the network that the, that the normal network is normally on. I know it sounds a little confusing, but just bear with me. Another thing that I need to note about this project is that it's gonna require a lot of coding. So if you're not very comfortable with coding, um, I basically have breaking it down completely. All the codes that you're gonna need are down in the description below. All the commands, all in order. It's gonna be everything that I'm doing is gonna be right down in the description below. All you have to do is just look at it, you know, follow along, and it'll be very simple. So without further ado, let's get started. The first thing we're gonna to wanna to do here is download Raspbian and Jesse with Pixel, the latest version. The latest version to come out as, as of the recording of this video is January 2017. So once you're done record, or once you're done downloading it, of course, use your Win32 Disk Imager program, again, link down below, and run that program. Go ahead and uh, plug in your micro SD card into the computer and point to the uh, image. In this case, it's going to be this one for me, and we're going to hit write. So, anyways, while that's writing, let me just explain a little, few little things here. The latest version of Raspbian Jesse, for some reason, does not have SSH defaultly enabled, which is a real pain for me because now we have to take the Raspberry Pi after we get our image, plug in the chip, and we have to hook this up to some kind of television or something and enable SSH. I'm gonna show you how to do that right now after we're done uploading this file. Okay, so once that's done, all we're gonna do is we're going to look at our Raspberry Pi. You can see here that it's booting up and that we, once you're done waiting the five seconds, it'll boot up into a Raspberry Pi Pixel. Once Pixel is completely booted up, then all we have to do is open a terminal window. We want to head and open a terminal window. And then we want to type in the phrase raspy dash config. I'm sorry, it's actually sudo raspberry config. So sudo space raspy config. I can spell config correctly. All right, so once we have this window open, we want to scroll down to advanced options. And then we want to select SSH. Basically, we want to enable SSH, say yes and I'm basically done at this point. The only thing I want to do is I want to do an IF config uh, space minus A. So I want to do an IF config space minus A so that way I can see my IP address that is, is assigned to the Raspberry Pi because I already, because I have an internet connection installed on this uh, Raspberry Pi, I want to be able to SSH into it. So this one is using .19. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my computer, I'm gonna load PuTTY, and I'm gonna load 192.168.0.19. Again, PuTTY will be down in the description down below. This is a program that we use to SSH a remote into the Raspberry Pi. We're gonna select open. It's gonna run warn us of a potential security breach. We just say yes, it's okay. And then I'm going to log in as Pi, and the password is raspberry and hit enter. So now we're pretty much good. We are now SSH into the Pi. Believe it or not, that's actually the hardest part for most people. So now we're gonna just run through a bunch, big line of codes. So I'm gonna go ahead and start that. So the first code we're going to be using is sudo app get update. Now what basically this is doing is it's updating all of the repositories in the Raspberry Pi so that way we have all the latest uh, versions of everything that we're gonna be needing to use. So this will take a little bit of time, but just give it a little bit of time and, and let it do its thing and you'll be good. Okay, so once that's finished, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna install two applications. Uh, the first one we're gonna install is HostPad PD, which basically is our DHCP server for the Raspberry Pi. It's gonna say, are you sure? You just say yes. Again, I'm copying and pasting everything that I have because I have all these codes pre-written for myself too because it's a lot of codes. And the next code we're going to paste in is going to be uh, install tables. Now basically what this application does is it'll then take uh, the DHCP 
server and basically reassign it to the internet or whatever our local connection is it's going to ask if you want to modify the rules you just you just basically save the current rules say yes yes and let it do its thing so the next thing we need to do is edit the dhcp config file here's the command for it and we're going to need to go we're going to need to scroll down until we see the option for option domain name example.org basically what we want to do with these is we want to add a pound symbol or a hashtag for you millennials out there uh, to these two options basically it'll comment them out so that way we won't use them uh, we also want to find the line that says if this DHCP server, um, this line right here where it says authorize or, or at the, so we want to remove the pound symbol there so that way it gives us DHCP access. After we're done with that, we want to scroll all the way down to the bottom of this uh, host file and you're going to want to basically paste this entire command here, subnet 192.168.42.0. Basically, this is telling the uh, DHCP where, how we want to structure the IP table. Uh, we want to use, you know, instead of, we can change this to whatever you want, but the default is just fine as far as a DHCP table. Again, all this is down in the description below. You're just going to paste this in. And after we've pasted this in, we want to save it by holding control and X. It's going to ask if we're going to be modifying this. Are you sure? We hit Y for yes, hit enter to save it and on to the next section. The next thing we need to do is we need to actually uh, edit the uh, DHCP server fi uh, other config file that we have. Uh, once you hit in that command, we're going to go ahead and scroll down until we see interfaces. And under interfaces, we want to update it to where the interface is in between both of the quotation marks. It says WLAN0 because since we're all using the Raspberry Pi 3 in this tutorial, it's going to default to WLAN0. Let's go ahead and escape. Yes, save. And what we want to do next is we want to actually disable the wireless cards because we're going to be doing some configurations with it. How we disable it is we use sudo if down wlan0. So after that's been taken down, we want to go now into our network interfaces so we can double check a few things. Now this is the most difficult part. So basically what you want to do is you want to, you want to go all the way to the bottom and you just want to hold backspace. You want to delete everything that you see in this file up into a specific point. You want to stop shy of where it says auto low. Now what I've done is I've already retyped the entire process what this file should look like. It's down in the description below. It should essentially look exactly like this, where it's all these has been commented out. It already knows what it's looking for as far as auto land and the uh, low internet. So once you've pasted all of that in, we're going to hold control and X to save it, hit yes and enter. And then we're going to load the IF config command into the Raspberry Pi for wireless LAN. So that way we assign the number one, 192.168.42.1 as the server. So now we've assigned it and now we need to go and edit our host pad config file real quickly. So let's go ahead and edit that. We're actually creating a new host pad file. This is basically going to be where we tell the computer or we tell the Raspberry Pi how to emit the wireless signal. And again, we have a uh, pre, I already already written all this out for you. It's all in the description down below. Uh, the interface you can see here, we're gonna use WLAN zero for the wireless device. The driver I have commented out because we're gonna be using the stock Raspberry Pi three driver. Now, if you had a customized or a different style of USB device drivers, uh, this is where you would then put it in, but there's only a specific range, and this is for like Raspberry Pi 2s at this point, but I digress. Anyways, the next thing is you'll see here the SSID. Now, if you want to change the network name, this is where you would change it. I'm calling it TorNet, which makes sense because, you know, it's a Tor network. Uh, you can change this to whatever you want. So, like, if you wanted to have it say, like, you know, my internet or iNet or, uh, you know, secret CIA van one or whatever, you know, whatever crazy thing you want, uh, this is where you would change it. The only other thing that's important in this file that you really want to edit if you would choose, want to is the WPA passphrase. This little area right here where it says Raspberry, this is the password to the wireless network. If you want to change it to something else, this is where you would do it. Okay. I'm going to leave it to Raspberry because that's just with a capital R because that's just fine. I mean, I'm, I'm going to take this down as soon as I'm done with the tutorial, but when I make my personal one, I'm going to change it to something else. So let's go ahead and hit control X. Yes. Enter. And the next thing we want to do is we need to go into our default host pad file and make a few modifications in it. What we want to do is we want to scroll down till we see uh, the daemon uh, OPTS uh, actually, no, it's the config file. 
there there it is the daemon config if file and what we want to do is we want it to un first of all uncomment it out in fact let's go ahead and just delete the whole thing and we're going to paste in what we need it to say again this is down in the description below you can copy and paste the file or the the phrase if you would like now that we're done there control x yes enter we're going to paste in a different that we're going to do the initialization file and basically the same thing here we're going to go to the daemon uh, underscore config equals and we're going to make it say this we're going to actually cut or i'm sorry we're going to delete it and I'm going to paste in what I wanted to say. Now, what this basically does is it points it in the right direction as far as what files to use uh, for this process. So we're gonna go ahead, control X, yes, enter. And the next file we're going to, we're gonna to need to edit the system config file. And what we're gonna do is we're going to scroll to the bottom where we see the, let's see here, let's filter. Here we go. The .NET IPv4 IP forwarder equals one. We want to basically get rid of the comment there. And after we're done with the comment, uncommenting it, we're going to hit control C. I'm sorry, not control C. We're going to hit control X. Yes, enter to save. Uh, we're going to then need to do our bash command for echoing out. Let's double check our process. Right click. Okay, so now it's going to automatically forward. We're going to basically be pasting all these commands in. Again, these are all down in the description below. If it does not for some reason accept the, these following commands now, there's probably something up and you probably need to start from the beginning because it probably forgot to either make a file or copy something. It's, it's very common. I've done it before myself. It took me like three times to do before I got it just right. But like I said, if you have all these commands in front of you, this should be done. So our last command is going to be the sudo user uh, hostpad.cnf uh, file. So basically what this command does is it starts the AP. It starts it as an, as an access point. So now we are able to run Tornet. As you can see here, the SSID equals Tornet. So now if we were to just connect to the Raspberry Pi right now, it would just basically pass through straight to our internet like as if it was its own little network. So that's half the battle right there. Believe it or not, we're halfway done. The easy part is actually installing Tor. So now that we've done all of that, I'm gonna go ahead and shut down the process by holding Control C. Before we even start installing Tor, we wanna paste in this command here. And what this does basically is it will temporarily stop the service. But after we stop the service, we wanna do a sudo reboot. And this will actually log, this will log us out of the server, or this will log us out of the Raspberry Pi temporarily, but after this reboot, trust me, you wanna do this so that way we can see if all the processes that we did to make it automatic and start are working. So like I said, after the reboot, we're gonna go ahead and re-log in. We'll log in as Raspberry Pi, password is Raspberry. All right. So what I'm gonna see here is I'm gonna see if our host pad or our host a APD has started. So let's see, let's go ahead and start the server. Okay. And let's do enable. And we're going to enable both of these reboots. All right. So what we've basically done here is we have enabled it to where it automatically comes up after reboots. So it's, it's good. At this point, we're basically done with making an access point with the Raspberry Pi. I know it's been, it's a lot of code. It's a lot of things that's confusing, but trust me when I say this, if you just copy and paste it all, it's, it's going to work every time. Once all of that has now been up, now it comes the fun part of actually installing Tor to where it energizes with the Raspberry Pi to where it makes it to where it's a VPN in a way. So the first thing we're going to do is if we haven't already got the uh, latest update of Raspberry Pi, which we did in the first of the tutorial, we're going to hit, you know, app get update. But we're just going to go ahead and install Tor. So we're going to do sudo app get install Tor. So what it's going to do is it's going to go through all of its repositories. It's going to go ahead and install Tor. It's going to ask me, are you sure? Just say yes. And it's going to go fetch and install the file. So we'll be right back. Okay, so once that's done, we're going to go ahead and make our own little Tor C file. This Tor C file basically is the configuration file. And we want to copy and paste the following text after the FAQ notice. So again, this text will be available down in the description below. I know it's a lot of pasting, but after the FAC, 
So after the FAQ, which is right here, we're just gonna go ahead and paste all of this item here. This will basically tell us, you know, the virtual network. It'll tell us the ex it'll basically go to the exit node. It's gonna tell it what server we want it to uh, use for these uh, listening ports and everything. Again, it's all very basic stuff. So we're gonna hit Control X, hit yes for enter. And then we've got that all that saved. The next thing we need to do is we need to configure our IP table so that way they uh, synergize with Tor. So that way we allow specific things to go in and out through Tor. Now, uh, how we're going to do that is once we've done the uh, IP tables command, we are going to do a the second one. Sorry. We're going to add these two lines of code. The first one is to enable port 22 through the Tor router, which is basically our... Um, 22 is for the uh, putty so that way we can still communicate with our tour and 53 is just a precautionary uh, route for or is a precautionary port for tour so that way it has an exit node so we've got our exit node and then we're going to have our entrance node which is 9042 after that we're going to copy and paste the uh or sorry close the natl table and we can see here that we are redirecting to port 22 and we have 53 open and 9040. Those are the only ones that we really want open. So after such ports have been done, we right click and we uh, paste this line of code, which is for the IP tables to save it. And then we're gonna go into the log notice here. So let's go ahead and put in the code for log notices. So that way it'll log all the you know activity that happens in case we need to review it for later, which is just a good idea to have all in general. Uh, the next thing is gonna be, uh, these next lines of code are going to be for supposedly making it automatic. Now, I've had troubles doing this part where basically it'll say that it does it to where it'll reboot and launch uh, Tor correctly. But if you reboot the Raspberry Pi, you will have to do the Tor section of this tutorial over again. Basically, I'll highlight which ones uh, you'll have to do. But once we're here down with our services Tor start, it'll now start the Tor service. Well, we're going to double check to see if the service is up by doing the service command status. And we're going to enable the automatic updates by giving it this command. So it'll automatically update when there's an update out for Tor. And at this point, we need to shift focus to our wireless device. As you can see here, I've got a network here called Tornet. I'm going to go ahead and automatically connect to that. And I'm going to uh, type in the password and hit join and what's going to happen is that tornet is actually my raspberry pi so now that you can see here i'm on tornet i'm going to go ahead and go to safari i'm going to load up ip chicken and now you can see here it says wait we require one more step which usually means because with ip chicken it'll do a, a an anti a ddos check to see if you are um, you know, on a legitimate network. And since I'm on Tor, it's giving me this one more step thing. But if you look here, let's go check.torproject.org. Congratulations, this browser is configured to use Tor, which means that we're using Tor on our Raspberry Pi 3 off of a wireless network. Isn't that awesome? So, and just to go a little bit deeper, you can see here the IP address that assigned me is down there. It's 5.79.68.161. That is one of the Tor network IP addresses. And if you decide, if, and if you have any problems for some reason with this tutorial, go ahead and leave a comment down below. I usually will try to respond to those as fast as I can because the Raspberry Pi projects, I really do try to do a thorough job with doing these. But keep in mind that you will not be able to reset the Raspberry Pi to move it to a different location or whatever. So wherever you create it is the location you need to decide that's where you want it to be. Otherwise, when you move it to the new location, you'll have to redo the Tor steps, which I will clearly mark on the description down below. So that's how you create a Tor Raspberry Pi VPN tunnel. So thank you very much everyone for watching. If you liked that video, don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, and share the video with your friends. And as always, I'll see you in the next tutorial. And that's all for this episode. And if you enjoyed it, then thanks. Perhaps you'd like to see some of my other videos. I've talked about many other topics on this particular subject. Or stay tuned. There's new videos every Monday and Thursdays here on High Tech Man. And as always, thank you very much for watching.